But sometimes bad things happen. And it happens, so. Alright guys, so we're going to go look at a walk-in freezer that's not working correctly and see what's going on. It's on call Saturday, so let the party begin. Alright, so it's not running. So we might be stuck in a defrost. Looking at our coil up here. I can't see. Can you see? Because I can't see. Uh, I don't feel heaters on. I can't literally see it, but it, it appears from what I'm seeing from here that they're clean. So I bet you we're stuck in a defrost. That's really gonna make this thing take a, a boring loop, won't it? Thermostat could use some help, but it's been like that for a while. So they said the ice cream was feeling a little soft and it is. Ew. Look at that. Both fans are the same speed. What the heck? That's very unusual. That is weird. That is definitely weird. How's the meat? The meat's hard. At least the meat is hard. So we're good there on that. So it hasn't been down too horribly long. That meat's a little soft. Nobody likes soft meat. The uh, fish though, it's a little bit, a little bit in between. It's kind of limp. It's just a little limp. So um, let's go upstairs and see if we're getting our power down here to it and kind of go from there. All right, so we've already had to replace the cooler. At least that's working. Ended up having to reuse things, but I replaced that fan cycle control back in September last year. That ain't good. I hear something humming. It's a little bit warm. They may have lost this turd. It may have went to the El Grande Grand. It may have left the building. That's not good. Not good at all. That sure sounds like the compressor's twisted off and just running. Change that back to September also. That's me writing. Is that just vibration? It's not the clock. Clock's out of the juice. What's going on with this turd? What's going on? Let's check some voltages here and see if we're getting the power out to where it needs to go to. Okay, the clock has got no power. I wonder if this is three phase and we lost the leg. How much you want to bet? Because I don't have no power between the two. What do we got as far as going to ground? 120 volts on that leg. And because it's looping through it, it's 120 on the other. Let's push one more time. Yep. So we lost one leg of power. That's not a good thing. Let's take a look at this high-tech box here. Yep, we've got fuses. That's not good. All FRN 20s. Can you guys see that okay? So I want to make sure you can see it because it don't really matter if I can see it. All right, coming into the top, we've got 214, 215, 212, 13. Going to the bottom, Jack. A little loose goose there. Got it there. So I'm gonna say, are we loose on this one? Nope, let's go to this one. The middle one is the psychopathic killer that took this turd out. Now, if it was shorted, I would assume we tripped more than one, one leg. Now what sucks is because it only took out one leg We've been single phasing for a while. So, we can go ahead and, for giggles here, let's go ahead and check continuity to ground to see if we've got any bad, bad shorts. This ain't the only way to do it, nor the best way to do it, but it's definitely a fast way to do it. 
So the first stage, we have nothing there. So we may have just lost one leg. You should replace all three fuses, but in this instance here, I'm gonna replace just the one for starters. And we'll see what we got. So we've got it replaced, just the one. We'll replace the rest of them if we can verify everything works. We'll check amperage on that particular leg here. See what happens. 48 amps, that ain't good. We may have a stuck compressor. That's not good at all. Um, curiosity, Let's see what this other leg pulls. Nine amps and the compressor came on. Now granted, it might've been single phasing still. So let's see what happens now. 48 amps, so we might have a short on that particular leg. Something weird's going on there. Now out of curiosity, because I love the curious cat, let's see what this leg ends up pulling here. And as always, guys, if you're not trained on electrical, don't be doing what I'm doing. I'm not responsible for you killing yourselves. This is not for homeowners, business owners, to try to get out of paying somebody. So six amps on that one. So this leg here is not a very happy leg. And yes, I'm doing it again. Now we have eight amps. That's bothersome. What the piss? Was it by chance that it tripped again by the time I turned it off and back on again? This compressor is in bad shape. I mean, look at these valves. You can't even do nothing with that. This thing's been here for a long, long, long time. And uh, it just won't die. So, solid sight glass. Now I'm wondering, did we have an issue in defrost? Is that what maybe caused it? So let's see. Hey, fan's even coming on, so we know that's not it. Put it into a defrost, 13 amps, so the elements come on immediately, which sucks. 10 amps. And 5 amps, so our biggest one is right there, so it's pumping down. There could be a short in our wiring somewhere. Good grief, look at, this thing is just such, such issues. Okay, so we're at seven amps. Not sure yet what we got going on here. I'll tell you this much, if we just replace the fuse and go, it's gonna happen again. So we've got something that is intermittent, whether it be a defrost element downstairs. You could have a shorted freaking compressor crankcase heater. Could be a fan. It's really hard to say. So we'll kill some power here and see if we got any shorts up here because this is not a great idea. And the phone rings again. All right, so when it rains, it pours. Somebody else just called in, so we got another call after we get done with this. Uh, let's see if we can find out if there's any issues with this. Which it don't look like, oh, looky there, what is that? You gonna tell me I'm gonna get that lucky? Ah, oh, come on, there ain't no way. I'm gonna pull that off here. Unfortunately, it didn't look like it was shorted into anything, but I did flip it around so that it ain't rubbing up against that vibrating. Let's take a peek in here, take a peek at the compressor stuff. Oh yeah. That coil looks good. Heck yeah. That's a uh, poor man's freaking uh, low ambient control there. Cause it is freaking cold today for some reason. better than it was. 
Ain't nowhere near as bad as their air conditioner over there. That thing is bad. It is nipply out here. So basically this contactor is looking potentially a little bit shoddy, but I don't know if it's maybe one leg sticking. Cause you can see two here have more arcing going on than there. So generally when in doubt, change it out, but still, oh, look at that. Look at that wire right there. That just kind of came off, didn't it? That, that ain't good. That could cause some issues. Oh, there's all kinds of happy stuff happening today. Where'd that come from? I came from right, right there. And I think that is the fan cycle. Yeah, like how loose that is. That thing's just loose. What's that going to? Goes out of there. Goes to the fan. Yes, sir. Get that back on there. That would not cause 40 some amps of current on just one leg. Got some shroud, some shreds or that's kind of a cruddy looking wire. Ooh, that looks kind of shitty, don't it? That wire looks pretty shitty. Let's pull that out of there. Look at this wire. It's all cracking and stuff. That's that's really fantastic. So let's chop that one out and put a new crimp on on it and stick it back in the same spot. an insulated connector. See where it says insulated? The one that looks like a smiley face and then non-insulated is the pokey one? You don't use the pokey one. For some reason, nobody seems to understand that. And then they punch the back side of it with it when they do it, which the barrel on cheap connectors is not a full circular barrel. So then the front opens up, which is a bad idea. All right, so we look fairly okay there. I'm still wondering, did we have an issue with the um, single phasing possibly? And maybe it just hadn't completely cooled down. Let's try it out again. Seven amps, because we're in defrost. Nothing. Nothing bad anyhow. Yeah, this is gonna be one of those ones where I'm probably gonna have to come back because we ain't gonna catch it doing it. That sucks. Let's pump her down again and let's look at that clock a little closer. I wanna check in back behind those wires. I don't wanna just shut it off. It is funny that that one there is the highest of all the ones when it goes into the defrost. So we just checked in there, everything seems to be fine. I'm checking down in the areas where the wire's going down through. Don't see anything there. I've checked down in this area here. We got a termination wire that's no longer used. Um, nothing on the bottoms that I can see. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Not good, not good at all. Let's go downstairs and look at that uh, evaporator. Make sure there's no heater defrosts, uh, defrost heaters that have got any shorter wires on them. All right, so this is less than idea. The uh, way these professionals wired this up, they went right through the freaking uh, back of the door here. So everything's tied up against this panel you can see with the thermostat's kind of just hanging by its own demeanor so we got some fuses in here so let's take some more looks i need both hands all right we're gonna go ahead and change this fan control because the brackets busted off of it and they disconnected it for some reason so i'm gonna say probably because it don't work yeah it's really hard to see much of anything right now so I'm kind of 
cheating however I can to get this thing back into place just to make it a little easier. There's one screw. I think the other one we're going to have to use the uh, screwdriver on it. So got, that's one of the problems with the coolers is they're so small that a lot of times you can't reach anything because everything's in the way. I also had two fuses here that didn't look like they might be any good. And because my tools are up on the roof, I got my beater meter, which is a UEI piece of junk. And right there's the reason why I don't like UEI. It freaking display blanks out and does dumb stuff. Because it's a little cold, it's not ready to work. That and they give you this cheap leads. Alright, both fuses are okay. Here's the red one. Oh yeah, that yellow one I cut, that goes to the limit. That's nice. Have to fix that. Okay, so luckily that will go up there and hook right back on. So we'll just undo. There's the brown. It looks like it goes to a brown up on the roof. So we can hook that back up. I prefer to have the termination on there. I, I had set it at 35 minutes and uh, I don't think it's been causing any problems. But anytime you can use that, the better y'all if you're going to be. I don't know why we can't maybe put a screw in that thing so that maybe it won't be like falling over like a lump noodle. These freaking wires are so dang hard to strip when they're cold like that. Yeah, usually that works really good. Today ain't one of those days. There we go. So all that's hooked back up. I don't see any shorts here. I mean, there could be an element shorted. I have a feeling maybe we were single phasing. Um, let's fix this uh, thermostat here so it's not all Yankee dink. Well, we got it apart, checking. I'll also see if we can see deep in there, make sure there's no shorted wires, which it does not look to be. Everything looks pretty tight. Yeah, I think we're pretty good on that. Don't we'll make it too tight and cause it to bend the body. That would be bad. Okay, there we go. It's not, not overly tight because that will bend it and cause it to not be accurate, potentially. I know it is like that on some of the other thermostats, don't know if it's quite like that on this one. So, yeah. All right, so we're gonna wrap this one back up. I don't see anything out of the ordinary that should be causing our issue. Ice cream's too soft. Too soft, right? Yeah, the ice cream's junk. <laughs> it's bad. Hey, like people like dessert ice cream. Yeah, <laughs> it's dessert. sloppy, sloppy. Hey, no dessert. <laughs> no dessert today. <laughs> less than ideal but it is behind the cooler it's not hanging and hopefully nobody destroys this thing let's go back upstairs and see if we can get this thing running we did at least get it as good as can be I don't like I said see any major issues let's get this thing froze down worst case scenario we keep the fro food from falling any worse and uh, get our mess cleaned up here. So we've got that back together. We're gonna go ahead and just run this thing, see what we can find out. Go ahead and put her back into love mode. 12 amps coming on. So it must be pumping down a touch. Yeah, it's pumping down. All right, let's let this thing kick on and see what it does. I mean, it's not, uh, not tripping the breaker now. 
And as you've seen, I've checked about all the wires for scuffs and rub throughs and things like that. Only thing I'd like to see done yet is hook that brown wire back up to the termination. I assume they has had problems with it not running long enough or something. So instead of replacing things, they probably just bypass and removed, which would not surprise me a whole lot with the way things have been taken care of here. Um, and it could have been done a long time ago. It's really hard to say how long ago that was done. It's... We don't want to find out that, that why they unhooked it because there's a short in the wire causing it to terminate early. So we know we've got 212 volts between X and N. At this point, I'm just gonna leave a go. We made an honest attempt to get it. I've got a no heat call to run. All right, so this is gonna be one of those ones I'm not real happy with. That compressor is still hot even now. And of course, we're a little low. That's a real surprise. High side may, may not be awfully well adjusted check that real quick while we're at it it is the season for being cold the chances are judging from all this other stuff probably not gonna be able to get in here yeah, that pressure switch is not doing the greatest of jobs that pink right there makes me think this crap is 502 I don't know what they may have put in there since then they probably have a drop in Density temperature is 186, so we want to stay above 186. Yeah, it's not completely full. I don't like that, but man, what are you going to do? Not the greatest of times to try to do that. There's 175. So we got the fuses replaced. I'm going to leave the extra ones here that are better than nothing if by chance somebody would come and not have them on their truck. Just going to leave them inside here. I'm gonna check voltage drop across this contactor real quick. I think this happened once before. And so we got nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. All right, one last thing I kind of almost forgot to look at. Not that we can get a good look at it anyway, because this stupid valve's in the way. Um, those terminals, they look like they're okay on the compressor itself. They seem to be tight. I'm gonna recommend they consider replacing it. This thing is unknown refrigerant. Everything on it's just plain wore out and has been replaced at one time or another. So that way they know up front, that, I mean, hello, it's pretty obvious. I mean, a lot of stuff up here is just plumb, plumb about wore out. So. We're going to go ahead and uh, go down, double check those fans, and uh, see how that looks. Otherwise, uh, probably going to have to go into our no heat call that's waiting on me. That's a uh, great thing about Saturdays or anytime you're on calls, you got to go. You got time to spend all day on it, especially when it's going to do some random stuff like this. We've done as about as best we can. Um, and uh, I'll make sure I explain that to them, but it could possibly do it again. You could have something weird going on. I mean, we could have made the compressor. We could have done all kinds of stuff, but we covered the bases as best we can for today. All right, guys, let's go wrap this one up. So we're back here at this thing again. So I just got here, went downstairs. The fans are not running. What's interesting is, is I've got voltage on all of my fuses this time. Compressor's not hot. Doesn't look like we're in a defrost. I haven't touched anything. The clock's got power at the bottom. Don't forget, it's gotta be cold enough for the fans to come on. So, since the compressor's not running, the coil's not cold enough, so it won't bring on the fans. Our low pressure switch is open. Look at that, we're at about 14 PSI. Normally it comes in at about 20-ish. So 
that off for a moment. We can see whether or not it basically goes into a pump down or whether it's a uh, All right. Okay, so it's not opening the solenoid valve is what it looks like, so we might have a thermostat issue. So either the solenoid or the thermostat's acting up, which that thermostat was looking a little shoddy. So far, so good. Not the same issue we had last time. Let's see what we got going on here. So going across it, it is closed. Let's see if we got power to one leg. We do have power to one leg and we do have power on the other leg. So she is closed. Now we might have a solenoid issue. Masking is so bad in the freezer, kind of keeps you a little bit warm. Right. We got a big old ball of ice here on the side. I wonder if by chance it pulled the wire out of the solenoid there. I'm going to turn off the power so I can see what I'm doing. That way I don't get shocked. And like I said, the power is off, so otherwise you're potentially going to burn up your solenoid here. It could just be a solenoid bad. Find out. Uh, let's go ahead and strip this thing off and see if we got 230 volts to it. It has 100 and 115 volts. So there's 117. I, I don't really want to grab a hold of my fingers and hold it. Yeah. Hold on a minute. I'll be right back. All right. So you just missed everything I just did. Okay, so we came in here with the, the uh, load impedance meter here, and we came across the terminals. Load impedance meter puts a load on the circuit. So when we come across it, we literally have 115 volts, 116 volts, and going one leg to the other, the black's hot, the red is not. Um, now we should have continuity to ground technically if it really was a neutral, which I don't think it is. Yeah, it's not. So we go to one leg to ground and we're looking at about 1900 ohms. So we are definitely uh, got some issues. We checked the resistance. Okay, see the fans just came on. So we're gonna unhook that. The solenoid came in at 720 ohms. I think we got a wire off, so we need to track that down real quick. Yeah, I remember this one. And going in here that terminal and that terminal I got 215 volts yeah so I'm, I'm, I'm getting what, narrowed down what is the ceiling noise located uh, uh it's it? over here I checked it out and it's fine um the wire was only getting one leg of power so I, I checked it over here and I got power so I have a feeling that here's the fans hitting something so maybe it's hitting that wire I'm not sure I'm going to take these blades off and take a look underneath and see if maybe one of the fans hit it and maybe that's what caused uh, the short last time or something. I don't know. So I'm going to uh, get this apart and I'll find out here in a minute. Okay. If not, I'll run a new wire. All right, guys. What I'm doing is I'm checking here to see if that wire had vibrated into the the bracket because that can happen and does not appear to have done that oh son of a gun there's the short can you guys see okay there we're gonna go ahead and get this fan blade yanked out there you go oh look at that this thing shorted out once before because there's some butt connectors on there. Yeah, that's not my type of crimps. That, uh, and then they, they didn't even crimp it very good. Right there's the freaking wire where it shorted into that piece of metal, which you can see right there. What we're gonna do, 
chop out that bad section. We'll repair it and then we're going to make sure we strap those nice and tight so they don't vibrate. Um, black wire looks to be perfectly fine. Red wire, who I said basically uh, was slacking, is uh, the one that uh, was damaged. So, unfortunately, things happen, guys. You miss things. You know, you're trying to be the Johnny on the spot and get things done quickly. But sometimes bad things happen. And it happens. So, the real judge of character is whether you're willing to say, hey, I screwed up. Or if you want to blame it on somebody else. You know what? I could hide this very easily. There we go. I don't like these crimpers near as well as my clines that are up on the roof because these ones have a weird, a weird crimp to them. All right, that's good. They didn't do a very good job on that one. I, I can't, I can't let that go. So let's see if we can get in there and chop out that bad section. There we go. You want to make sure that's lined up to the outside edge corner where your barrel connector is at. Otherwise you crimp the plastic and not the wire. This one tightened up too because the wire tie was kind of loose in here. While well, you got her down, man, I don't want to come back again. So, oh, good lord. This is why I like long wire ties. Be careful getting in there, you don't want to bend your fan blade. But it can obviously be done. So, there we go. That spins and that spins. The, the magnets out of the magnetrons on the microwave. You can use those. I've got the fancy ones, but that one there, if I lose it, ain't a big deal. All right, so what did we learn today, boys and girls? We learned everybody screws up. Well, I completely forgot about checking in there. I completely, and if you remember, I went through and checked all these wires, replaced the little defrost termination thing, all that. I didn't try cutting corners, just freaking forgot. If I would have caught it, wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't be back here today. Cause it's worked all week. I mean, today's Friday and I was on that call last Saturday. So it lasted the whole week without going down. And unfortunately, here it is, it went down. And today's Friday, I ain't on call. So I am okay with it. I am just going to get the, get the burrito out of here. Okay. If you guys like the video and you want to see more like it, you know what to do. Till next time, people. We'll catch you on the next one. Yeah.